This is the first lesson on a series of lessons on C++ STL and in this video we will see an introduction to the library. In the future lessons we will explore the power of C++ STL. So first of all what is STL and why do we need it? So let's understand. So STL stands for Standard Template Libraries and these are a set of tools available in C++ programming platforms. So whatever platform you are using these STLs will be there. And uh, why do we need STLs? because these help us to code quickly, efficiently and in a much more generic way. So why quickly? Because uh, most of the data structures and algorithms that we need to use in our code, there are already implementation of those data structures and algorithms in our uh, library. For example, let's say you want to use uh, design an application where you need uh, some sort of priority queue. So instead of you designing it by yourself, you can directly use the implementation of priority queue in C++ STL. So that way it will help you to write your code much more quickly. Similarly, these uh, implementations have been there for a long time and these have evolved over time and these have stood the test of the time and these are very efficient. And uh, in the recent implementation, even uh, the some of the abstractions are being optimized so that you don't get any uh, overhead due to different abstraction levels. So these are very efficient implementations of the data structures and algorithms and also these are generic programming paradigms since uh, the implementations dot, don't take into account a particular type but they are type agnostic and when you are using it you have to provide the type. So a simple way would be that let's say you have a stack. So uh, it does not matter whether you are inserting a int into the stack or a string into the stack or a custom class into the stack the stack will always be implemented in the same way. That is, it has to follow last in first out. That is, whatever element is pushed last, when we pop, that will be popped first. So these are, these follow generic programming paradigm. So let's see what, what is uh, generic programming paradigm and then we will see how C++ handles it. So first, before starting the course, let's see what are some of the prerequisites for this. So first, this is not a very beginner level course so you should have some programming experience in C++ uh, and then you should have some knowledge of templates although we will uh, quickly see an overview of it so if you have used templates before it may be a recap for you and then you need one uh, ID uh, you can use any of your favorite IDs like Xcode or you can use Visual Studio or you can even use online ID for example online GDB and we will be uh, using uh, online GDB for most part of this course, but you can use any IDE of your choice on your computer. Now let's see generic programming, which we have just looked into. So generic programming is a programming paradigm where data types are not specified in the implementation of the code, but rather they are specified while using those implementations. So the same example, like we saw for stack, we don't need to know the type of data being inserted in the stack for implementing the stack. So most of the implementations here are generic. That's why the name template. And uh, these are also called sometimes compile time polymorphism because uh, specifying data types at uh, variable definition or object instantiation is in essence polymorphism which is resolved at compile time. So this is potentially more efficient than uh, runtime polymorphism. Uh, where uh, some CPU cycles are consumed but here it's all done at compile time so these are much more efficient. So now let's see uh, how C++ uh, achieves this uh, generic programming. So in C++ uh, there are generic types which are called templates and you can see this keyword template which is here in the standard template library. So templates provide uh, generic programming in C++ and these are special constructs. And just a reminder, uh, if you want to define a function like area, so if you want to define a uh, area function which take two ints, we would define something like this, int area, int a, int b, and let's say this is the area of a rectangle. This is a, this is b. So area is a multiplied by b. And here you would return a multiplied by b. But let's say uh, we want to implement area for double also and float also. So uh, this will not work or even if you use this, let's say for 5.5 and 10. So this will be converted to int. So it will return 50, but we needed 55. 
since we need it for double so uh, that a generic way of doing this would be to use templates so you write the keyword template then this angular braces and then type name you can also use class here generally we use class for gen defining generic classes so you can have temple templatized uh, functions as well as classes and uh, the stl library has both functions as well as classes then you write type name or class and t here i have just used one type uh, but you can assign multiple you can have t1 t2 and so on so t is a generic type and our implementation is based on this generic type so return type is t and it takes two uh, parameters of type t and then we have t result a multiplied by b then return result so it should be rather area of rectangle uh, rather than simply area so you can see this and then while calling we will call it like this let's say int int uh, x equal to area int 5 10 similarly if we want for double then double y equal to area double and then specify the parameters here so here uh, at the time of using this implementation of area we are passing the type in this angular braces so for this function you would simply call area 510 here also you can call that but uh, it's better to specify the type explicitly in this angular bracket called int and here we specify it as double so let's first uh, write this code in online gdb that i had talked about and then we will move on to see uh, what are the different components of uh, stl in c++ so here i have opened this online gdb and this is a sample program hello world and you can see that it has all the run debug and other facilities so let's if we run it we get output here at the console you can also change the language you can have uh, c++ 17 14 or older versions but i would recommend using c++ 17 or the latest version you are comfortable with so let's see an example so what we will do so let's get rid of this and then we will define the same function area rect or rather these, these should be const since we are not expected to change it but for simplicity let's ignore it for now and then we have t result equal to a multiplied by b and here what we will do we will call it let's say 10.5 and 5 and let's run it so in this case it's int so it will be converted to int so 0.5 will be lost and it should be 50 but in other case we will get the actual value so let's run area oh, so here i have called it area rect and you can see that in the first case we get uh, 50 so 0.5 is truncated then in other two cases we get 52 so here it was int so that's why uh, it was converted from 52.5 to 52 but let's call it double and float now it should be in double and float so you get an idea here so we have defined it just once but we can use it based on our requirement so here you may not get motivated since it's a very simple example why would you do do it 
uh, but we have very complex functions and algorithms which are implemented in this generic way and it's very helpful and it can be used with different types now let's uh, continue our discussion and uh, see what are the different components of stl so there are four components of stl and these are containers iterators algorithms and functors so containers are just uh, array like data structures uh, that store collection of objects so you need some data structure where you store it then we have iterators so these are pointer like objects that allow traversal of containers and we will see different type of iterators in future videos and we will also look at different containers then we have algorithms these are a set of functions that are implemented in an efficient way and these implement different algorithm operations such as uh, search sort modify count etc there are many many more algorithms and uh, these are generally uh, defined in algorithm.h so you need to include this algorithm if you want to use the algorithms present in the still then we have functors these are also called function objects and uh, these are classes which uh, over overload this uh, parenthesis operator such that they can be used as functions uh, that uh, maintain a state and can be parameterized and these are generally defined in functional.h so you need to call you need to include functional if you want to use these features so some examples are like uh, std plus minus multiply equal to and so on and these are generally used with other functions like let's say you have two vectors of same size five five elements and you want to find the sum of element wise sum so what you can do you can either uh, run a loop and take elements at a time add them and put it in the result or you can simply use std transform here you pass the begin and end iterators of first one uh, begin iterator of second one and pass this uh, plus std plus this functor and this will automatically call plus on these element wise and then return the result and also you need to pass the uh, iterator to the beginning of result and uh, these are versatile and these can take unary and binary both kind of functors and uh, plus is a binary uh, operator so this is defined for two parameters so this parenthesis that is overloaded here will take two values there are some unary uh, things also so these are functors so we will see uh, different components in the future lessons so let's begin <laughs> 